In the Wild Project podcast, the host, Jordi Wild, and guest, Boyan Krukic, discuss the retirement of Boyan from professional football. Boyan explains that he retired at a young age of 32 because he felt it was the right time to move on to a new stage in his life. Despite being physically fit and still having a desire to play, Boyan felt that his time as a professional footballer had come to an end, and it was time to start a new phase in his life. Boyan reflects on his 16-year career and describes how he felt privileged to have been a part of the football world and the many experiences he had during his time as a professional footballer. He also highlights the challenges he faced in the latter years of his career, including playing in different countries and experiencing injuries that made him feel the sport was no longer fulfilling him. Boyan emphasizes that he did not want to leave football with a bitter taste in his mouth and wanted to end his career on a high note. Ultimately, Boyan's decision to retire was based on his feelings and aspirations for the future, rather than solely on his age or physical fitness. Boyan Krikic talks about his experiences playing for Barcelona and his decision to leave the team after four years. Boyan speaks highly of his former teammate Gerard Pique, calling him a person with a big heart who was always supportive. Boyan describes how difficult it can be to maintain relationships with former teammates after leaving a team, but he notes that he has remained in contact with Pique over the years. Boyan also reflects on his decision to leave Barcelona, explaining that he felt he had to leave in order to grow as a player. He recalls thinking that staying with Barcelona might have hindered his progress rather than helped it. Boyan made the decision to leave on his own, without any pressure from the club to do so. He spoke with the club's leadership after making the decision to leave, and then went on to play for Roma and Milan. Boyan also talks about a famous interview he gave in which he discussed his time playing under Pep Guardiola. He explains that he does not regret the interview and that he prefers to focus on positive aspects of his life rather than negative ones. When asked if he has ever spoken to Guardiola about the interview, Boyan replies that he has not seen him since he left Barcelona. They begin discussing Krikic's move from Spain to Italy to play for Roma. Krikic admits that playing in Italy was the biggest challenge he faced in his career because the style of play was different and he struggled with adapting to it. However, he also comments on the positive aspects of living in Italy, such as the gastronomy and climate. The conversation then shifts to Krikic's time on the AC Milan team, where he played alongside Mario Balotelli. Wilde asks Krikic about Balotelli's reputation as a difficult player and Krikic defends his former teammate, stating that Balotelli has a big heart but has been affected by his difficult childhood. Krikic also mentions that he had a good relationship with Balotelli, and they would joke around in the locker room. Krikic then discusses his time playing for the Ajax team in the Netherlands, which he describes as the place where he felt most identified. He praises the team's culture and values including the responsibility placed on players to take care of their own equipment rather than relying on staff for assistance. Krikic notes that this was a significant aspect of his development as a player. The conversation ends with discussion of Krikic's time playing for Stoke City in England, which he refers to as his second home. He explains that it was difficult leaving Barcelona, but Stoke City provided him with a welcoming atmosphere and the opportunity to play in the Premier League, which he describes as the best league he played in. Boyan describes the respect he received from the fans while playing in England, even when the game ends and the spectators go home. He also spoke about his most successful years as a player, during which he achieved his highest level of performance. However, he suffered a knee injury, and though he recovered well, he noticed a change in his playing style. He continued to play well for the next two years, but eventually his team began to decline, and he decided to move to Germany. Boyan found playing in Germany to be much more disciplined and organized than in England, and he felt that the German style of play was very calculated and rigid. However, he found his time with the Mainz team to be fulfilling, particularly their celebration when they avoided relegation. Boyan eventually returns to Spain to play for Alaves, but he admits that it was not the same as playing for Barcelona or Real Madrid. Despite this, he still felt a sense of ambition and excitement to play for Alaves, and he was treated well by the club. He then talks about his experience playing time at Alaves in Spain. He expresses disappointment with how his time there turned out, as he was initially excited to play for the club but was quickly put aside. He mentions how he had been signed by a certain coach who had a specific playing style, but was replaced with another coach who did not favor his playing style. Despite this, Boyan still holds appreciation for the city and people of Vitoria, where Alaves is located. Boyan then goes on to talk about his experience in the MLS League in Canada, a league that he did not initially feel excited about joining. However, upon joining, Boyan was pleasantly surprised at the level of professionalism and high-quality facilities that he encountered, and he found himself much more invested in the league. He talks about the growth of the MLS and the influx of players from Europe and South America who have joined the league. 
He also mentions how he sees similarities between the MLS and the Japanese Football League, which he went on to play in later on. Throughout this section, Boyan reveals the ups and downs of his football career and how both his expectations and realities have differed in various countries and teams. Despite hardships, Boyan expresses appreciation for the cities and people he has encountered along the way. Jordi Wilde and Boyan Krikik also discussed Boyan's experience playing for the Vissel Kobe soccer team in Japan. Boyan shared that he had always been interested in Japan as a place to visit or potentially live, but it wasn't until former teammate Andres Iniesta asked him if he wanted to play for Vissel Kobe that he seriously considered moving there. Boyan noted that he was drawn to the level of competitiveness in Japanese soccer, which he found to be high, and that he was impressed by the technical skills of Japanese players, which he had always known to be good but found to be even better than he expected. However, Boyan encountered some challenges while in Japan. He suffered a bicep injury early on, which set him back about two and a half months, and later contracted COVID-19, which forced him to quarantine for 11 days and recover for another month. Despite these setbacks, Boyan did not feel that he played less than he expected. Boyan explains that he faced several injuries during his career, which affected his ability to maintain his physical fitness and competitive level. He also talks about the challenges he faced while trying to adapt to the social and cultural norms in Japan. Boyan observes that the treatment of women in Japan was the first thing he found troubling, citing the prevalent machismo and lack of personal agency given to women. Despite these challenges, Boyan mentions that he met some people in Japan whom he loved and cherished. However, he also encountered instances of racism, even though he was a European football star. Boyan expresses his willingness to adapt to the country's customs, but he mentions that it was challenging to fit into their culture since foreigners were not always welcomed. As a Mediterranean, Boyan noticed the lack of warmth and affection Japanese people showed during interactions, which made it hard to participate socially with his colleagues. Boyan mentions the Japanese concept of not being able to say no and how this made it difficult for him to empathize with them. He also discusses the positive aspects of Japanese life, such as their appreciation for their culture and value for hard work. When asked about whether he would live in Japan again, Boyan says he would not because of the difficulty in communicating and working with locals and feeling disconnected from them. The hosts then shift the conversation to Boyan's experiences with anxiety and how it affected his decision to decline a call-up to the Spanish national team when he was 17 years old. Boyan talks about how he was struggling with anxiety during his first season at Barcelona, and how it came to a head when he received the call-up. He ultimately declined it because he was not in a good mental state and needed to prioritize his mental health. He describes anxiety as a wave that was difficult to control and he experienced symptoms such as dizziness, headache, and pressure in the head. He mentions that he was able to control his anxiety during training but it resurfaced on the day of the match, causing him to withdraw from a match due to gastroenteritis, when he was really experiencing anxiety. However, he did not let this setback hold him back and worked on getting better. He continued to play for the Barcelona team and score goals in the following months while keeping in touch with the federation who knew about his condition. Boyan talks about the period leading up to his selection for the European Cup and how he had to make the difficult decision to decline the invitation due to his anxiety and the stress it would put on him. He describes how he was in the car with his mother when he received the call and had to turn down the opportunity, which was a hard decision for a 17-year-old. He talks about the pressure he faced from the media and his fellow players to go to the tournament, but he knew that he had to prioritize his well-being and take a break to recover from his anxiety. Boyan reflects on how he felt mature for making this decision, regardless of how tough it was, and how he learned to prioritize his mental health over his career success. Boyan speaks about his experience with anxiety, and how it was difficult for him to speak out about it at a young age because it was considered a taboo topic. He explains how this affected him when he was called up to play for the Spanish national team and was not able to communicate the real reason why he didn't want to go. Boyan also discusses the pressure he felt throughout his career as a professional football player, where the media constantly placed labels on him and expectations were high. However, he learned to detach himself from those external pressures by focusing on his own goals and values. Boyan emphasizes the importance of recognizing that mental health struggles are common and not something to be ashamed of. The conversation highlights how societal attitudes towards mental health have evolved and how public figures can play a role in increasing awareness and reducing stigma. He explains that it is important to focus on one's own achievements and value them instead of paying attention to what others say or do. Boyan notes that judging others is not productive, and that learning not to do so can lead to understanding and peace of mind. Jordi asks Boyan about the negativity that seems to exist in social media culture, and Boyan says that it is driven by people's desire to always want more and their inability to be content with what they have. 
He believes that this societal problem can be addressed through better education and emotional development. Boyan explains how he feels fulfilled as both a footballer and as a person who has lived through the sport. He discusses the importance of being ambitious as a player, but also being aware of when to stop and move on to other projects. Boyan describes himself as a romantic of the game, having started playing at four years old and being attracted to the simplicity of running after the ball. However, he acknowledges that as one grows older, it becomes difficult to maintain the same innocence and love for the game due to external pressures and factors. The discussion also touches on the negative emotional implications and pressure associated with football. Boyan reveals that he comes from a football family, with his father being a footballer as well. Boyan began playing football as a child and joined Barcelona at the age of nine. Boyan mentions that being a footballer comes with a lot of responsibilities, including physical fitness and dietary restrictions. He explains that the worst part of being an elite footballer in a foreign country is the loneliness he experienced. Being away from family, friends and his team makes it difficult to build relationships in a new place. Additionally, activities outside of football and socializing become scarce, making it challenging to make friends. Boyan confesses that he is not comfortable approaching strangers to make new friends. Furthermore, most of his teammates usually have partners, children, or families, leaving little time to socialize. Boyan shares his personal experience of living in hotel rooms or apartments alone, and how unsettling it could be, especially after a match where he cannot share his success or failure with anyone. Jordi Wilde asks Boyan about his struggle with anxiety, and how he dealt with it. Boyan mentions that he worked with a doctor named Monson to manage his anxiety. He states that he found great success in psychoanalytic therapy, and that the key to personal growth is accepting uncomfortable situations and viewing them as challenges to overcome. He also emphasizes the importance of setting personal goals and boundaries, as well as the ability to say, no, in potentially harmful situations. Boyan also discusses his sensitivity, viewing it as both a blessing and a curse, and highlights the importance of surrounding oneself with positive people and protective measures to maintain emotional well-being. The conversation then shifts to the pressure that young athletes, such as Ansu Fati, face in the public eye and how the hype surrounding their success can be both a blessing and a burden. The host and guest discuss the importance of psychological support for young athletes in the world of sports. They agree that the responsibility of protecting and guiding these athletes falls on the shoulders of coaches, sports directors, and presidents. One of the main issues is that these athletes are often thrown into the spotlight without the necessary support and are expected to perform without considering their mental state. The guest advises that it is crucial to understand how the athlete is feeling and to empathize with them in order to offer the right kind of support. He also suggests that it should not be solely the responsibility of the sports club to provide psychological support, but rather, the athlete should have access to external professionals to help them cope. The importance of the mental and emotional aspects of sports is stressed, highlighting how the lack of these can hinder a player's trajectory, even if they possess great physical talent. The host and guest also acknowledge how the pressure to perform and win in the sports industry can create a negative impact on mental health, making it difficult for players to seek help. Krikic mentions certain players who have exhibited this mentality, including a player who trained relentlessly despite suffering from excruciating pain due to an injury, and another player who refused to let knee pain prevent him from running during a demanding preseason. The guest also talks about Messi, and describes him as someone who has an inhuman level of ambition and drive to be the best. Krikic believes that Messi will eventually return to Barcelona, considering the deep connection and history he has with the club. Towards the end of this segment, Krikic discusses his post-playing career plans. He expresses a desire to become a coach or a director of sport, and to use his experiences on the field to benefit others. He wants to take courses that can help him externalize and transmit his knowledge, and says that he'd like to work in a sporting organization. However, he acknowledges that he enjoys exploring different types of music, from Japanese to Catalan rock, and a mix of genres depending on his current mood. The transcript section begins with a conversation about food recommendations from Catalonia. The guest Boyan Krikic suggests a dish called caracols, recommending it for its unique combination of ingredients such as spinach, rabbit, and sausage. Moving on, the conversation turns to the question of the most beautiful area in Catalonia, with the guest recommending Nina as the most special place due to its historical significance and personal connection. The host then asks if Boyan has had any paranormal experiences, to which he responds in the negative, saying that he is a bit skeptical about such things. The conversation continues with the hosts requesting Boyan to sign their Justin Bieber of Luck poster, and ends with a friendly farewell where Boyan is wished luck in his personal and professional life. Boyan Krikic also discussed his early years playing in the Barcelona football club's youth system. Boyan began playing football at the age of six, 
and after playing in various local tournaments, he caught the attention of the Barcelona scout team, and he was ultimately accepted into the club's Benjamin category. As he began to evolve as a player and develop the knack for putting the ball in the net, he drew interest from more people within the football community. Although he was only nine years old, Boyan was already practicing and living at La Mesa, Barcelona's youth training facility, which he described as a privilege for young athletes who desired to grow as both individuals and athletes. During Boyan's early years with the club, he commuted from his hometown to the facility to train and play. While he eventually moved in with his grandparents in Barcelona when he was 12 years old, his parents made the decision not to live on-site at La Mesa due to their desire for him to have more family time and protection outside of the facility. Boyan noted that adjusting to living with a diverse group of children from various regions of Spain was difficult, as he struggled to communicate in Castilian, the official language, with other children who used different dialects. Despite that Boyan recalls the period with fondness, he remembers his time in La Mesa as one of the most beautiful stages of his life where he found a unique kinship bond among fellow young players who all shared a common hope and aspiration of playing football professionally. Boyan saw little difference in the treatment that he received, even though he was regarded as a prodigy, from the club's management. He did not realize this until he joined the club's second team. He found that competing with more elite teams made him reach his full potential, follow training tactics more diligently, and score some incredible goals. However, reaching the first team was still seen as a significant accomplishment, and Boyan did not believe that he had a real shot to join the squad until he was part of the club's second string team. He highlights that the experience was nerve-wracking and that he could not sleep the night before being called up to train with the first team. While in the dressing room, Boyan said he was in awe of the players around him, particularly Ronaldinho. He recalls that his first team of interest was made up of players that had gone through the same training process that he was now going through, such as Andres, Xavi, Victor, and Puy. Boyan went on to share that he was eventually called up to go on the preseason tour with the first team with no guarantee of becoming a regular. Despite this uncertainty, he performed well and went on to debut in the first team in two competitions, La Liga and the Champions League. Boyan describes the experience of debuting as unforgettable and details how players usually remember every detail of this experience. Boyan Cricket continues to talk about his debut with FC Barcelona in a match against Osasuna in 2007. Boyan shares that he was filled with ambition and eagerness to play but didn't feel nervous about debuting as he had been part of the first team for a while. He mentions that the feeling of being close to fulfilling his dream of playing made him anxious to get onto the field. Boyan then details the experience of being on the bench and finally entering the game. He explains the build-up and preparations before the match started and how he felt when he saw himself among the 18 players on the team sheet. He talks about feeling thrilled before, during, and after the match, and how it was the happiest moment of his life. He shares how he was eager to play, score goals, and contribute to the team's success. Additionally, Boyan discusses the pressure and high expectations placed on him. At first, he was not aware of the hype around his debut and his future in the club. However, as the season progressed, he became more aware of the buzz, which ultimately entrenched him in the social labeling of being the new star, new Messi, or the new talent of Barca. At first, he was taken aback by the labels but then went on to share how he recognized the importance of focusing on self-growth, understanding his process of development, and embracing his moment as a young player in the club. The discussion shifts to Boyan's future in the club and career path towards international football. He talks about how he received a lot of support from external sources such as fans, media, and even his own teammates from the club's junior team. However, once he joined the first team, he experienced a competitive environment among his teammates as he had to compete against talented players for playing time. Boyan also admits to feeling threatened by younger players being introduced into the first team as they could potentially take his place in the team. Despite these challenges, Boyan emphasizes that he was very demanding and realistic about his chances of playing time, and was always willing to work harder to achieve his goals. Boyan also discusses the impact of being in the public eye at such a young age. He explains that he had to deal with being a public figure and how it affected his personal life. He feels that his friends started to relate to him differently once he became famous, and he also had to deal with the constant attention and crowds that came with being a well-known player. Despite these challenges, Boyan emphasizes that he never enjoyed the attention or fame that came with playing for FC Barcelona. Krikic shares that he never identified with the persona he was expected to embody as a celebrity, and struggled with the loss of privacy and being seen more as a character than a person. However, he also describes feeling fulfilled by being an inspiration to others and appreciated by fans who connect with his authentic story. When asked about his relationships with teammates, Krikic mentions that Xavi Hernandez was particularly special to him, 
as he took on a protective and mentor-like role for a young and inexperienced critic. Other players, like Andres Iniesta and Samuel Ito'o, also supported and encouraged him on his career path. Despite feeling ambitious and desiring to be a starter, Krikic also recognized that he had to earn his place on the team and learn from more experienced players like Ronaldinho and David Villa. Ultimately, Krikic credits former manager Frank Ridgecard with giving him the opportunity and confidence to pursue a successful professional career in football. Boyan Krikic talks about the importance of giving young players continuity in their development as footballers. He mentions that if a player is given their professional debut, it should be because the coach believes they will play an important role in the team. Boyan cites his former coach, Rickard, who he says was instrumental in helping him develop both as a player and a person. Rickard acted as Boyan's protector, educator, and coach. Though they have limited contact now, Boyan states that Rickard is always willing to help him out in any way he can. Boyan reflects on Rickard's departure from football, noting that he respected his decision to leave the game behind because he felt fulfilled on a personal level. Jordi and Boyan also discussed their different experiences with coaches, with Boyan noting that Pep Guardiola had a clear idea of how he wanted to develop his team and created a positive team environment. Boyan talks about the incredible level of training and the ease with which the team understood and applied Pep's concepts, creating a caldo cultivo del exito, or a fertile ground for success. He also emphasizes the mental challenge of constantly proving himself and earning his place on the team. Despite being inexperienced and young, Boyan adapted well to the high-pressure situation and was conscious of his role in the team. He also reflects on the importance of these four years in shaping his ability to adapt to different situations and roles, which would serve him in his future career in different countries and cultures. Boyan also comments on his relationship with Zlatan Ibrahimović, describing him as a great professional and teammate despite the difficulties he faced in adapting to a new position and playing style. Boyan recalls how Ibrahimović, despite his size and lack of experience with high-pressure pressing, constantly tried to adapt and help the team through his work ethic and attitude. Boyan also mentions a personal anecdote where Ibrahimović, who was known for his martial arts skills, sat him down and promised to protect him while he was with the team. Overall, Boyan reflects on his time with Barcelona with pride and gratitude, acknowledging the challenges and opportunities that shaped him as a player and a person. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of the Pod Slice.